Previously on Rock Bottom, freshman reporter Freddie Kent learned from the mysterious sore throat that English professor Wayne Newton was recruiting students, including senior Lance von Chauvin, to stop a mandatory assembly which is to be held by President Nick McPaddywhack. Sore throat told the members of Stuff to stop Newton from stopping the assembly, but Newton himself was stopped by a bullet from the gun of Dumfries, a thug hired by McPaddywhack. Dumfries later accidentally kidnapped junior Kitty Boone, thinking she was Boosie Mittens, and students Jock Mulligan and Chris Nitro found themselves trapped together at the bottom of an abandoned well. Now on Rock Bottom, Episode 6, Private Plans and Secret Schemes, we join Rock Bottom sophomore Estefan Rodriguez, now the unwilling King Estefan I of the small Central American island of Pequeño, as he attempts to escape from his royal office. Luisa, thank God you're back. Is this your mother? Yes, your Majesty. This is my madre, Senora Caldera. Senora Caldera, I desperately need to talk to you. Luisa tells me that you worked for my parents years ago, and that you looked after me when I was a baby. I fear your majesty, I forgot. I saw a portrait of King Estupido and his wife when I first got here. I don't look anything like them. My eyes, my hair, everything is different. Your majesty, that does not mean... No, Luisa, let him finish. Senora Caldera, I know that Pequeño desperately needs a king, and that King Estupido died with is one child missing, but I also know that, despite what everyone here believes, I am not that child. Your Majesty! I was looking through the royal records with my translator. You looked after two babies while you worked here, the prince and your own son. I also talked with the royal doctor. He said that, while under your care, your son died. See, Your Majesty, that is true. But the doctor also said King Estupido had many medical problems that would be passed on to his child that it was a miracle the baby was born at all, and an even greater miracle that it survived infancy. Santa Maria watched over you. I don't think so. What would King Estupido have done to you if his son had died while you were watching him? He would have had my internal organs forcibly removed, Your Majesty. Yes, I thought that it would be something like that. I see that you know the truth. Uh, can you forgive me, Your Majesty? My name is Estefan. Or is it? No, your name was Jose, Jose Caldera. No comprendo, what are you saying? We're saying that I'm not your king, Luisa. I'm your brother. Mama, no. Dear Luisa, your father and I agreed after baby Princess Stefan died, it would be better if we switched the children and say that it was our child who had died. My life would be spared and our little Jose would grow up to be king. Only I didn't. No, the gypsies. They come and steal you in the night and take you to America. I want you to tell everybody what you did. I don't want to be king. I just want to go home. No, I cannot. Do not ask me. Nothing will happen to you. King Estupido is dead. Your internal organs are perfectly safe. Your Majesty, uh, Jose. Estefan. Estefan, tú no comprendes. The people are pequeño. If they find out you are not real king, they get angry. And if they get angry? They will execute as a pretender to the throne. The way they kill you will make you wish that they were just forcibly removing your internal organs. I knew this was going to be a lousy day. Back in America, at Doddering Hospital, located near Rock Bottom College, Professor Newton recuperates from his gunshot wound. Yeah, they call this pudding. Professor Newton? I've seen more appetizing meals on, on Wild Kingdom. Professor? It's Lance von Schulman. Lance, my boy. Uh, come in, come in. How are you feeling? Oh, it takes more than a bullet to the chest to keep Wayne Newton down. How are things going at school? Oh, not good, Professor. Well, not well. Some freshman reporter found out about everything. He printed the whole story in the Zenith. All about how you passed us even though we were failing, and how you don't want anybody to go to that assembly next week. But now, after that story, everybody's determined to go. This is, uh, this is terrible. Everything has fallen apart. Tell me about it. It seems like half the school has disappeared. Uh, disappeared? What, what do you mean? Well, my roommate, Jock Mulligan, plus Chris Nitro and Estefan Rodriguez, have been missing since last Friday, when that psycho, Machete Melvin, was okay. And now, my girlfriend, Kitty Boone, is gone. Nobody's seen her since yesterday afternoon. Chin up, Lance, my boy. I, I'm sure everything's fine. M maybe she just dumped you and, and wants to spare your feelings. Oh, thanks, Professor. That makes me feel much better. Far from perfectly safe, Kitty is dragged unconscious into the office of Rock Bottom President Nick McPaddywhack. Dumfries! I told you never to come here. What if someone sees you? Relax, Nicky baby. Everybody's at lunch. Look what I brought. Boopsy mittens, as ordered. Boopsy mittens? That's not boopsy mittens, you tomato head. Sure it is. I went to Stumlin Hall, like you said, room 201. 205, not 201, you fool. Oops, sorry. Oh, where am I? Shh, 
waking up. Get her out of here before she recognizes us. Oh, it's Patty Wag. You're the one who kidnapped me, but, but why? Too late. I didn't want you, girl. What's your name? Kitty. Kitty Boone. Well, Miss Boone, it looks like you're going to be my guest for a few days. Tie it up, Dumfries. Right, boss. Now, Dumfries, I'm giving you one more chance. Get me Boopsy Mittens and don't screw up. Don't worry, boss. I'll go get it for you right away. Dumfries. That's a nice bathroom, boss. That door, Dumfries. Right. Meanwhile, at the bottom of a well in the middle of the woods... Chris, I'm so thirsty. Try not to think about it, Jock. And I'm hungry, too. That rat didn't last us too long. The worst part is, I'm gonna die with you. I always wanted to go out in an explosion, blowing up a building for some worthy cause. I wanted to die in bed, surrounded by beautiful girls. Figures. Hey, oh, shut up. I want you to know, Jock, that we die of dehydration and starvation, I really, really, really hate you. Feel is mutual, Chris. At least I have the satisfaction of knowing that you're gonna die too. I almost expected our trouble to bring us together. Make us friends even. Ha! That'll be the day. I'll die first. Fashion. Everything about you disgusts me, you little old bastard. I don't even I don't think anything can make the situation worse. I don't even have the strength to cry for help anymore. I just wish I could see Terry one last time. Who's Terry, your girlfriend? Boyfriend. Somebody get me out of here! Searching. Searching through days as dark as night. Where is my light? I search, but I do not find. Searching. Searching. What was that? I think. My God. I think it's Terry. What's he doing here? Who cares? Help! Help! We're down here! I hear a cry. Plaintive plea for help, but tremendous distant shout from below. Well, well, well. What the hell is he saying? He's a poet. Terry! Down here! A greeting. He should warn me towards my reason of being. A rope, a reach, a life-saving line is all that is needed. I shall return, and with me shall I bring the means of egress from your underground doom. Jock, we're safe. Who touched me? Tell the freak to bring some food. That's better. At that moment, at the office of campus police, Chief Metzo and Sergeant Petunia discuss law enforcement on campus. So I said, drunk and disorderly, huh? But shoo! Pepper me, right in the eye. Felt like a house of cards, these kids today. That's great, Chief. What's the matter, Petunia? You look down. I guess I've just got a lot on my mind. Well, why don't you go ticket some cars? That always cheers me up. I'm okay, Chief. Don't worry about me. If you say so. Oh, I almost forgot. I know you weren't supposed to be working next Thursday night, but President McPaddywhack himself called and asked that all the campus police be present at this assembly thing. Do you mind? Chief... I wouldn't miss that assembly for the world. Shortly thereafter, in the cafeteria, revolutionary students Larry Laszlo and Bobby Latrollop have lunch. That freshman story in Zenith was a godsend. Now everybody will be at the assembly. Laszlo, I think we should be careful. I mean, getting everybody to go to the assembly just because that sore throat person said so? Maybe Professor Newton had good reason for not wanting people to attend. Don't worry, Barbie. We don't trust sore throat 100%. I think he's just looking out for himself. The members of Stuff will go to the assembly, but we'll keep our eyes open for trouble. Uh, are you gonna eat that? Yeah, why? Nothing. It's just... Meat is murder, Barbie. No big deal. It's just a turkey sandwich, Laz. Turkeys are living, feeling creatures, Barb. They feel pain, too. Laszlo! Hey, don't worry about it. Feast on the flesh of corpses if you want. Are you gonna listen to my show tonight? I guess. Food! <laughs> Boo, boo, boo. Hey, Chris. Where have you been this past week? Stuck at the bottom of a well with a fascist. But I'm back now. Does this mean we don't have the room to ourselves anymore? Thanks a lot for coming to look for me, Laszlo. I kept meaning to. Things have been... <clears throat> busy. Silent, I sit. Unnoticed. Apart. Forgotten. Hey, Terry. Barbie, this is Terry Maryberry. Terry, this is ba uh, Barbie Latrala. Laszlo's girl. Laszlo's good friend. Nice to meet you. Salutations to she whose smile could melt the poles of the earth and warm the coldest of hearts. Ooh, is that poetry or something? Or something. Poetry makes me tingly inside. Chris, you missed the meeting the other night, but... Yes, quiet. It's all right. Barbie joins stuff. Barbie joins stuff? Hey, I'm concerned about things, injustice, and whatever it is we do. I'm not a total airhead. Chris... 
we need you to whip up one of your special packages just in case. It's for the assembly next Thursday. My pleasure. Special packages? Explosives, Barbie. My own special blend. Long live the revolution! Long live the revolution! Yeah, right. In Stumlin Hall, the irritatingly superior Boopsy Mittens returns from her afternoon class. The nerve of that professor! As if I don't have better things to do with my time than his pretty little assignment. Why my hair alone, not to mention makeup? I'll just have to make a call to my daddy about him. Tenure or not, he's finished here. Hey, you! Who are you? Get out of here! Are you Boopsy Mittens? Why? Who sent you? I'll take that as a yes. Oh, let go of me this instant, you brute! Ow, that hurt! Ow, stop it! Ow, stop it this... Ugh. Finally, jeez, what a thick head. I must have got the right one this time. That is President Vic Paddywhack's office. Please, let me go! I won't tell anyone! No, I'm afraid that's not possible. I'll have to keep you locked up until the assembly. After that, it won't matter. Why are you doing this? Why? Why? You expect me to settle for being president of this second-rate college? No, never. I have plans, big plans. And after that assembly, everything will fall into place. You're crazy. Crazy? Was Alexander the Great crazy? Was Napoleon crazy? Was Adolf Hitler crazy? Yes. Well, all right, bad example. But I'm not crazy. Oh, no, far from it. What do you want? Why are you getting out? What are you getting out of it? Getting? Why, everything, my dear. First this school, then others. Before long, the country, and from there, well, from there, nothing is beyond my grasp. Everything will be mine. All the world will bow down before Nick McPaddywhack. Is President McPaddywhack insane? Seems obvious. Will his plan, whatever it is, succeed? How does Boopsy fit in? Will Kitty be rescued? Is Professor Newton finished? Will Chris turn the assembly into an explosive affair? Will Estefan escape from Pequeno with his non-royal parts intact? Listen next time for more of life at Rock Bottom. Rock Bottom featured Brian Olson as the narrator and Terry Maryberries, Bill Bates as Estefan Rodriguez and Chief Metzler, Maggie Reardon as Luisa Caldera, Amy Walsh as Senora Caldera, Sam Broderick as Professor Wayne Newton, Eric Olson as Lance von Chauvin and President Nick McPaddywhack, Jesse Rogers as Dumfries and Jock Mulligan, Tara Kennevin as Kitty Boone, Mike Fulham as Chris Nitro, Julie Post as Sergeant Petunia, Rob Swift as Larry Laszlo, Amy Strack as Bobby Latrollop and Oopsie Mittens, Rock Bottom was produced by Rob Swift and written and directed by Brian Olson. Rock Bottom has been a production of The Tomato Heads.